What's up? So, I'm changing. And it's for the better. It's a slow change, too. A slow, precise change. I've came a long way. And... I know the process that I took to come the way I've came. It's funny how a few small details done over and over again as a ritual daily can build you up into a better person. I've never felt this way in my life, ever. I feel great. I feel wonderful. And it's hard to express it sometimes. Because it seems to me, no longer than a year ago, I remember my thoughts. I remember how I used to think. I remember how my body looked. I remember how my results were, and they were not the results that I wanted. It was not the body that I wanted. It was not the mindset that I wanted. And I took initiative steps. Start seeking help. Start doing certain rituals. When I say rituals, I'm talking as, as if, you know, not seances or nothing crazy like that, but things that I talk about on this channel. I start doing daily rituals, like writing my goals out and listening to them in my sleep. And at first, the first 21 days were rough. I did not want to hear them goals. I did not want to write that stuff down. My mind was telling me to stop because I knew me. If I keep hearing something over and over again, I know me. If I keep hearing something over again, it's going to start sticking. And that's how I lost my weight. The people that knew me, you knew me as a chubbier version of me. Now, don't let this, uh, looking at this, I look, look, you see how I look. I'm skinny. It's just this coat. This coat is a, a extra large. I'm actually a medium or small, but I was an extra, extra large. Now I'm a medium or small in cer certain cases or certain fabrics. or I don't know what you want to, whatever. What I really can say about when I first started the transition from overweight, Cause I was almost, I was, I, I say I was almost 300 pounds cause I was about 285 one time. And then a week later it was like 290 cause I, I was just, I was binge eating. And I noticed when you bench eat and you eat, your diaphragm fills up and you can breathe better cause stress causes you not to breathe. That's why a lot of people smoke cigarettes. They're so stressed out that it's hard to breathe, but when you do this and take an inhale, you're breathing again. So it's really not the cigarette that most people are, are so hooked on. Yes, the nicotine will hook you, but you're hooked on breathing because you can't breathe because you're, you know, you're stressed out. And the same with eating. When you're so stressed out, you eat and your diaphragm opens up and now you can breathe. So it's all about that breathing. And them fresh breaths. But anyways, I'm thinking, I got to thinking like, I kept writing down, I am so happy and thankful now that I am skinny and I am 165 pounds. I wrote that down at damn near 300 pounds. My brain wasn't trying to hear that because I looked in the mirror and I was nowhere near no 165. 
But you know what? I fought how my brain was feeling. I kept writing that stuff down. It hurt. My brain was burning. Back of my eyelids was burning because I didn't. My mind did not want to accept. I am skinny. I am so happy and thankful now that I'm skinny and 165 pounds. I remember writing that down three or four times a day and listening it to, to myself while I was asleep. Now, I've seen a lot of people say that the affirmations don't work. I'm a living testimony that affirmations work. It hurts. And the more it hurts, the more I wrote it. I had to I had to battle with myself. And I'd write it and I'd write it and eventually writing it down became more easier. And I start having subtle thoughts. When I say subtle, there's really small inner thoughts of eating fruits and vegetables, of going to the gym. I start having the thoughts. And at first they were just thoughts. And then they start becoming louder thoughts in my head where I'm like, I'm at the store and I'm like, instead of me getting this foot long turkey sandwich, or whatever, I wasn't even eating meat at that time. Anyways, I stopped. Instead of getting a foot long wheat bread with vegetables on it and cheese and a whole bunch of ranch, let's go get the tortilla wrap spinach load it up with all the vegetables, put no cheese on it and put some vinegar on it and call it a day. So I start getting really meticulous about my health and I don't know where it came from. It came from the decision to start writing that stuff down and battling with myself to get it down packed. That's where it came from. When I sit back and look at all the stuff that I stopped doing, Man, it was a battle. I was battling with myself. I had a, I had a anger, attitude. My brain was trying its best not to let me write that stuff down. I hope somebody can contest to this, like that is actually doing it. it. It's rough. And there was one point in time where I was writing that stuff down a hundred times a day. At one time. Man, after like 20, I'm like, man, let's do something else. Man, I just kept doing it and it burnt up here. It was burning. But I didn't know what that burner was. Now I can tell you what that burn was. I was getting rid of the old program that was in my central nervous system and adding the new one in. After a while, I start writing. I am so happy and grateful now that I'm skinny and I'm 165 pounds. And I remember the day I got on that scale and that mug said 160. It said 160. And I was like, I was flabbergasted. I didn't know what to think. And that's just the the, the weight thing. And, you know, there was there was habitual habits of, of anger and sadness and all other little stuff that was stuck in my head. I got rid of all of it. It's not there no more. I had anxiety from the day, from the time you wake up to the time you went to bed. I had anxiety for four years. I did not know how to get rid of it. One of my affirmations, I am so happy and thankful now that I am happy and live a stress-free life. That was one of my affirmations. It's still to my day, to this day. I write that stuff down still to this day. I ain't had an anxiety attack or even thought of anything to be an anxiety for a long time. I be so happy all the time. Yeah, my face might not see it. My insides is happy. I just don't show it on my face as much. I try to stay as militant and stern as possible the way I the way I want to be. But I'm happy inside. I'm truly happy, not happy with life. I mean, I'm happy with life, but I'm more happy with myself and the transformation that I took and the, the steps that I took. And I just I'm, I'm looking at it in retrospect, like. What if I didn't write this stuff down? Where would I be? What if I didn't listen to people like Bob Proctor and Tony Robbins and Les Brown and Dr. Wayne Dyer and Zig Ziglar? What if I didn't read all these books? What if I just accepted life the way it is like most people do? 
where would I be at this moment? I'd still be fat. I'd probably made it past the 300 mark. Still probably be smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, complaining about everything, blaming everybody instead of blaming myself. And I've came a long way in just less than a year. Where am I going to be in five years with where what I'm going at? Where am I going to? I don't think y'all understand. This is my testimony in a way. That's what the video is going to be called, testimony. I've been programming my mind for so much success that I can feel it in my bones. And this, this YouTube channel, this is permanent. I'll make a video every day or every other day. This is permanent. You're going to watch me. You are going to watch me develop into whatever I'm going to develop, develop to be. There's going to be videos in the future. I'm going to be in Miami. I'm going to be in, in New York, California, wherever I decide to go. I'm going to have a video. This vid these videos ain't just going to be me in the car all the time. Eventually, you'll see me transition into this wonderful person that I am, that I believe that I am. Because I got to be me, not the me that you think I am, the me that I think I am. That's why I say that people, you know, whatever you believe about me is none of my business. What's my business is how I believe about myself. I can care less anymore. And like I said, that's a part of your self-image right now. Your self-image is based off of other people's beliefs. You got to work on it. I'm a work in progress, but I've made a lot of progress. And I want you, whoever's watching this, to be the next person that can overcome their emotions or overcome tragedy or or in, get rid of habits or get clear on where you want to be in life. Anything that you want can be done. We are a spirit in a body with a mind. I'm going to say that again. We are a spirit in the body with a mind the spirit is omnipresent meaning it's everywhere meaning you know the answer to every question because the spirit is everything spirit is energy too energy is neither created nor destroyed it's the cause and effect of everything in any space of given time you have deep reservoirs sitting on top of your head your mind your mind is the essence of you. You're the soul in this body with a mind. You got the answers to every question. You're just not in tune with it. You want to gain an awareness of where you want to be in life. Those things that you have deep inside that you want to get done, you can do it. But you got to channel in in it. You got to start doing it. You're a spirit with all the answers. All of the answers. You are the answer. You just need to channel in. Let the ego go. Develop a spiritual walk with yourself. Listen to the real you, not the ego. And the more you get rid of, well, I'm not going to say get rid of. I don't think you really get rid of things. The more that you conquer traumatizing things in your past, let's say if you've been raped, if you've been whooped unfairly by your parents or the school did something to you, you had bad grades. Once you overcome 
those situations that are sitting subtly in your subconscious through your nervous system that are still in your present moment as we speak. Once you start getting rid of them, you empty space for better opportunities to happen. So the more you work on yourself, the more you empty space for success to come in. You'll get to the point where when it's time for you to walk across the street, you won't have an image in your head of you at three years old walking across the street, getting ran over a car. So you're scared to cross the street. You won't have that no more. Get rid of that. That is in your way from other things to channel into you. You are the spirit. Spirit, Hebrew word, ruha, it means breath. You are the breath. That's where you are. You're not the body. You're not this body. You're not this mind. You're the breath. So you're like a cup. You're the essence inside the cup. You're the empty space of the cup. And your thoughts and your body is the liquid that pours into the cup. You are the emptiness in which the body and the mind is placed into emptiness. In order for there to be matter, it has to be emptiness. It makes sense. Get in tune with yourself. I dare you to develop you. You have the answers to every question that you can conceive come out your mouth. Get in tune with it. Self-development is the key. Mental health is the key. And like I said, this the, these videos ain't going to just be me sitting in the car. Eventually, you're going to see me around the world. You don't have to believe it. I have to believe it. You're not the one that's saying this. I'm the one that has to believe this, not you. So enjoy these videos in the car as they as they last, because eventually I'm going to be in somebody's beach or near a mountain or wherever I'll be. And this channel will grow. And this will be a big channel one day. I'm putting it out in the universe. And hopefully I can help and assist people in self-helping their self because this is my calling. This is what makes me happy. Everyone has a calling. My calling is helping. And this is what I'm going to do. But let's get, I got to get back to my busy life. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.